Hey, it's Joseph here. Recently, I have gone over inside of SketchUp how to lay out a floor plan, or in that case, it was actually my apartment. So I wanted to do a similar practice inside of Revit to model it out quickly and then bring in some of the furnitures and cabinetry via metric or imperial library, and then use Enscape's own asset library to put down some of the entourages so you can kind of look at the scene as it being rendered out. So the very first thing to do is to start up Revit. And I'm just going to start a new project or new model in this case and construction templates. And I'm gonna change that to architectural template and okay. And once that comes up, I'm gonna find the correct floor plan that I'm using. So I'll be using this floor plan that I found and I was using the same exact plan for SketchUp. So I'm just gonna use this in here as well. So I can just close this and then pretty much drag and drop into my scene here. So if I maximize Revit again, I can just put that in the center of all the elevations. And I first need to scale this. So I need to just put down detail line. You can go to annotate and detail line. It is normally DL for short, so DL. I remember this room being 12 by 12. So I'm just gonna measure from the center of the wall down to center of the wall somewhere here. And I just want that to be 12 feet. So right now it is appearing to be 16 and nine. So what I do is I just select both of them and go into the scale tool or RE for short. And then what I do is just snap onto this endpoint here. And then I want this distance to be at 12 feet. So one, two feet, enter. And then now that line should be at 12 feet as you see right here. Let me just go over a couple of more measurements to make sure things are in order. That's looking okay there. So I'm just gonna delete this right here and then go to architecture and wall. I think we had used six inches before, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that and then just start to mark it up here. And good thing about Revit is that it's just gonna snap onto a whole inch rather than half inch or a fourth and so on. So you can just quickly follow all of these walls and you can trim it, extend it. The short keys that I use is WA to put down a wall or sometimes I just like to click on a wall and then just type in CS create similar and then put down similar type of wall and I'm noticing that just has to extend all the way here so I may just put down another wall down here and then just extend these walls. So to extend what I do is trim function TR and then click this wall and then click that wall and it should just extend and meet each other. And I am noticing this internal wall should have been slightly thinner so I'm just going to put down perhaps five inches wall there. Or if I needed to, I can just go to edit type and then change wall thickness here as well. But I think five inches is just fine. So from the center portion, I'm just gonna draw it up here. And then that is appearing to be thinner wall there. And I can just scoot down just using the arrow key. And I can certainly go over and then just trim it down like so. So it's quite a standard practice for you to just kind of go over walls like that and even internal walls. And then to really trim things and clean up, trim these two. And then I also use TT, which is a shortcut that I have assigned for trim extend single element. Then I can just trim it to that wall. Same thing right here. Then I can just run it against that wall that wall perhaps another wall right here and that needs to meet on the corner and perhaps this needs to extend if i want that to extend i can just drag that up to here and then it'll run like so and then this wall right here to be extended over here and 
So it is looking like it just generally followed most of the walls. And the next thing I will do is just put down the doors. I can just go to architecture door and it will just bring a default door. Some of the rooms might appear to be smaller door. So I can just go ahead, click on smaller door. I'm gonna go with 3480. That is still appearing to be a bit too wide. So maybe 30 and 80. And if I need to flip it, I just hit spacebar and I should be able to put these floor plan down very quickly. And I noticed that there is extended area over here. So let me just put down the floor. So for the floor, you just click on this one right here and I can just trace outer edge of the walls. And you can of course just tap to select all the perimeter, but it'll go over the entire wall like so. So it's not really useful in that case. So I would just go over all the walls like this and then trim afterwards. So trim these two because I want a floor to run to include patio and deck and then trim this. And if there is any error, it'll flag me up. So if I check that, the floor has been laid down there. So as soon as I put down floor, the image will go away. If I need to bring that up, I can just put it down as a foreground so I can look at the plan. However, I am not seeing the walls that is behind this image. So perhaps the better way to do this is right click on the floor itself. And then I can actually change the transparency of the floor. That way you just see the image behind it. So you can also put down a ceiling over it. So a ceiling, and then I can just go over certain rooms. In my case, I just want to put down ceiling for the entire house. So I'll do the same practice of tracing it. I already have a floor. So what I'll do is I'll just hover over this floor line and tab until I get the entire parameter. And I'm guessing perhaps in this area, it will receive different ceiling. So let me just go ahead and go over that area. Uh, by the way, I was hitting PL for pick line, which is not a default shortcut, but it's a custom shortcut that I always use and trim this and so that the ceiling is going over rather than running over the patio. So trim these two, okay. So my ceiling has been put down. However, it's not gonna show because this is a floor plan. So everything is looking good, save this one up. So everything is looking good. Let me just put down some of the cabinetry perhaps. So I can go to component and just click on a component. It will have a desk and some of entourages that are available in here. Maybe I can just put down this desk right here in this bedroom and maybe one inside of the living room. And if I had wanted some different type, I can just click on this one, which is a student. I don't know what's the difference exactly. And this is slightly bigger desk and maybe it's a desk area for living room so it is slightly larger so let me put that down in this corner i can snap it by just snapping this edge to here and i can just click on the component again and there's nothing that i want to bring in at this point so what i will do is load family and as soon as i do that it should go into the default library of families and then i can go into casework and then i can do base cabinets maybe the kitchen sink unit so open that one and then i can just drop it right there so perhaps a single door and drawer on this side right here next to it and then i can do another one and then i can do the two drawer type over here and it is appearing to be slightly wider unit so i can go here and pick out the wider unit that is too large 42 perhaps and then let's attempt the countertop as well so if i load the family i can go one up and then countertops so perhaps click on this one okay i just need to flip this by mirroring this i can just draw axis or dm in my short key and then do that and delete this one so that it is mirrored onto the other side actually this doesn't really make sense so let me extend that wall there and actually it is a good idea to click on this and pin it so that you don't end up moving them and also to have a bit more cabinetry down here and i can select on the unit behind this 
countertop by just dragging it like so and then copy and then rotate RO and then I can rotate that around. I'm not sure which way is the front, so I'm just gonna put it down and worry about flipping them later on. In order to copy, I just type in CO, and then I will be able to just move it. And if I want to move it, I select it MV, and then snap onto the edge right there. And I just need to populate this scene a bit further. So immediately I can just click on this button right here, default 3D view. If I click on that, the 3D view will pop up and then I can hold down middle mouse button to pan and hold down shift key to orbit, which is actually the complete opposite of SketchUp. I cannot see anything because I have a ceiling that is hovering right here. If I click on it, it becomes actually transparent so I can start to see some of the stuff. I am noticing my cabinetry is not oriented the right way. If I want to see both of the windows, I just type in WT and then it just tiles the window and I can go here and change this one and then I can just orient this cabinetry around the correct way. Although I'm not seeing the same orientation inside of 3D view because the ceiling is still in the way, I can go type in VV and then it just brings over this dialog here and then I can just uncheck the ceilings, OK, and the ceilings will go away and I can see the cabinetry has been oriented properly. It's looking like it's going inside of the wall there, so let me just bring that out further and then perhaps snap back using on snap feature same thing bring it up and by the way if you hold down shift and arrow key it will nudge a bit further than just hitting arrow key mv to snap onto this wall right here so that the cabinetry is in like so so let me just verify all of others are oriented properly that's good and it is also looking like the sink is not really possible over these two units so let me just put it over here by just flipping it and then move over so I can just trim this edge here up against the sink and then bring it further down like so and then extend perhaps this edge over here and I can actually go into Enscape and make sure my default 3D is selected and then start. So at this point I should be able to pull into Enscape and see my scene in a bit more rendered up manner. It is actually kind of difficult to navigate through inside of Revit. So it is much easier inside of Enscape and you can kind of look at your scene and I'm gonna use its own asset library to just populate the scene further. So I can immediately dive in to the scene and lower myself here. And if you're not used to any of the short keys, you can just hit H and see the HUD display here. And you can just kind of look at what the keys do. I see the desk here, the doors, and the kitchen cabinetry that I have fit out. And fresh air is coming in from the top because I have hidden the ceiling. So I'm needing to go back to Revit. So let me just snap onto this corner right here. And then inside here, I need to bring in the ceilings back and OK. And as soon as I jump back inside of Enscape, you'll see that my ceiling has come back in and I'm lowered here. So I kind of don't like the fact that it is ceiling tile there. So instead of ACT system, I can just go to generic and then perhaps make the floor a bit higher than eight feet. So I want it at perhaps 10 feet if that is acceptable for the scene. And there you go, it has been changed. And I want most of the walls to be not so gray like so. So I can just click on this wall and then right click, select all instances in entire project and that is selecting all the exterior walls and perhaps I can make all the exterior walls into brick and then perhaps I can make all the interior walls to appear a bit wider. So go into edit type, edit and I can just change the material into something that is a bit wider. So I'm just gonna duplicate this type here, create a new material, and the shading's gonna be slightly wider, not complete white, and then the appearance as well. So okay, okay, 
and OK, OK. And if I jump back into Enscape, you'll see some brick walls and some of the internal walls is white, perhaps gypsum plaster wall. So that scene is prepared like so. And I can just go into detail of using different wall types, but I'm just going to quickly populate this scene rather than focusing on wall types. So I can just look at this view right here and then I can go back to the floor plan and just go into Enscape and there's going to be asset library. So once I am here, there are quite a few 154 library assets that are available. So I can just put down this office phone maybe on top of the desk and it is not showing up on top of the desk. It probably is embedded in size. And if I need to bring that up, what I can do is just look at, so perhaps I can look at the front view and then there's gonna be a phone in there. So let me just click that and if I am inside of this view, I can just go ahead and hold down shift key and up arrow key to just move it up until it appears on top of this desk. And if you want to look at the view in elevation, you can go to view, elevation, and I don't want building elevation, I actually want interior. So I just look at inside and of that wall there. And then just double click on this and you can notice that the phone is showing up there. And then I can just lower this down until I hit. It's looking like it is flipped actually. So let me just confirm that and perhaps move this elevation. So I can just rotate RO 180 degrees. So let's see how that looks like inside of Enscape. And then perhaps I can bring some of the people in here, uh, maybe a kid in this position. And obviously I want a bit more daylight in this scene and that should be really a patio window there. So what I'll do is let me minimize this for now. First of all, I want this portion to be somewhat running from this side to there. So I'm going to create a split, SL for split. Or if you go to modify and what I'm doing is just creating a split element right here. So there and there would be my cut. And then I can just click on single element like so and then go into down here exterior glazing. So I'm going to use curtain wall as my glazing type. And if I go back to my Enscape scene, you can see that it has been created into a back wall that is completely open. So that's looking a bit weird. So let me just change that to a different type, uh, maybe storefront so that it is appearing like so. So she's just standing there. Perhaps let's orient her looking outside. So she's just looking out right there and we can change the background a little bit inside of Enscape. Click on settings. I can go atmosphere instead of clear. I can do mountains. Go back to the scene and she's going to be looking outside into mountains. And then let me just put down a bit more assets asset library and click and then go into furniture i can put down lounge chair maybe on this side there you go so i am on top of the sofa and a shelving that i have created but if i look at it like so there's a scene i just quickly just populated using asset library of inside of enscape so that was a quick overview of bringing in a image floor plan into revit and modeling that up and using Revit's own library to bring in furniture and the cabinetry and then putting down a bit more furniture using Enscape's asset library, including this little girl that is looking outside the window. And I hope you have found this content useful. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you wanna continue watching these type of videos and I'll see you next time, bye.